Welcome to the Ship Show. It is our favorite day of the month because it's not just Jeff and AJ who we're already bored of, but Mr. Harry Arnett is in the house. Yo, Harry. AJ, <laughs> I love that in a Game of Thrones style. Oh, do you watch Game of Thrones? Of course. Oh, I Come don't. On. But I love I was the say, fact you're the one who doesn't watch it. I don't watch it. <laughs> but I love the fact that on today's Ship Show, we've killed off New Barth. <laughs> Well, New Barth is, uh, if you watch the show, he's similar to Jon Snow because he comes alive oh. and then we kill him off again. And he know. comes alive and we kill him off again. He's so He's more like uh, Walking Dead. He's a zombie. You cannot kill him. No, it's a motif of the ship show yep. is that uh, he keeps disappearing. You yep. know? But um, uh, he was actually, he's on the second portion of this show. So you and I are doing the first portion and then we recorded a portion with New Barth because he wants to talk about you see, uh, the new podcast. Do you see? You can't kill there him you go. Off. You can't kill him off. Kill exactly. Him off. I get the feeling when when people are listening and watching Callaway content in like 35 years, <laughs> New Barth will still be here, and he's going to be like the grumpy old guy that worked in your high school in like the <laughs> AV department. Right. It was like, ah, yeah, you know, like that was just he'll really still be cr- here. He's even crankier though. So cranky. <laughs> uh, so Harry, couple things off the bat. You were gone all last week. I was gone all last week. That's a fact. Yeah, we missed you. That's a fact. We're, we're, what happens we're, here when I'm not here? I uh, feel like it's, it's a well-oiled a, machine. No, it's a circus. Is it really? <laughs> it's like when you have a substitute teacher. Is know? it like, yeah, I, it's kind of like the pet store with the yeah. new puppies just running around. Because <laughs> I, I noticed when I speak, this is a pet store is a good metaphor, because I noticed when I came back on Monday this week, there was a, all the newspapers were on the floor. Here. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Right. Some of them were wet. Exactly. Some of them were crinkled up. Yes. So you're like, oh, I must have been gone for a week. What, uh, what were you up to? I was in Germany all week. I was there as part of my job now over the Jack Wolfskin in North America. Is that where they're Jack based? Wolfskin in North America. They are in, yeah, based they're in based Einstein, in Germany. Germany. And how's that? Oh, it's I've always amazing. wanted to go. It's amazing. Yeah, it's um, Idstein itself is a town that you wouldn't even know. It's it's a kind of an exit on the road from Frankfurt Frankfurt to just anywhere else. I mm-hmm. mean, it's and you just kind of go off the exit Idstein. It's like Carlsbad, kinda. It's like in between yeah, kinda, San like, Diego you know, and you Los Angeles. Know Carlsbad, because I guess most people know Carlsbad because of the water. Yeah, because of the um, the carlsbad springs yep. and they know it because of legoland yep. <laughs> that's about it carlsbad no that's about <laughs> it so uh and golf if you're in golf yeah, you know carlsbad. of course good surf too if you're in the outdoor industry you know it's because that's the home of jack wolfskin mm-hmm. and uh so i was there for a week mm. i stayed in a hotel that was um 500 years old really the building yeah Whoa. So it's totally cool and um and the town itself is is amazing amazingly beautiful yeah and we was there for the global sales meeting for jack wolfskin for spring summer 20 so product that mm. people will see in 20 and in america you'll see some of that product that question it's all yes sir is some of that product de- were do we have any hands in developing that product or no. not yet not yet okay not yet you won't really see in north america kind of our influence for a little while just that's the way that the life cycles work in right. apparel but you'll see the way that we like to think about brands definitely no. you'll see the way that that we like to think about activating brands definitely mm-hmm. sometime next year but as far as the product is concerned it'll still be a european right. brand that we're we're focusing here in the in america and then over time that will transition and and evolve yeah so it's it's cool and what a what a week i was uh I had that weird jet lag, so oh, yeah. Um, and normally it works the other way. I but I slept great over there, but I was waking up early, mm. so um, so I got That's to good. go you get on, to explore. It was great. Yeah. I I got to go on runs and walks around the town. Yeah. at five in the morning, no one's up, and it was spectacular. And the weather was really good. A little cold. Mm-hmm. When I got back, though, jet mm-hmm. lag said, "Hey, man." <laughs> I'm about to kick, kick your, your ass. ass. Yes. I was going to so say. So I'm still kind of recovering from Damn. that. Because then I got back and we had Travis Matthews sales meeting mm. the last few days. So yeah. I was up there for that. Yeah. And then uh, yesterday was an interesting day that I got to tell you about too. Which yeah. had half the day Travis Matthews sales meeting. The other, And this will, for those of you that follow golf and golf instruction on the internet, the other half of the day I spent with George Gankus. Yeah. I'm sure you guys, if right, if you follow any sort of golf content, you've seen – uh, George on Instagram. He also he works with a ton of pros, yeah. and a bunch of amateurs. Uh, yeah. So what was that like? Because I've always that been interested was, to meet him. I'm not kidding. One of my top ten 
golf experiences Damn I've it. ever been around. Yeah. I felt I, I was like, I really wish you guys could have <laughs> come up because he, okay, so let me break this down for you. You know this about me. Like one of my personal passions outside of what I do here, and this is a family thing too with, with my wife, is about um, innovation and learning. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's part of all of the kind of charity nonprofit stuff that, that we do as a family, either in terms of things that we donate to or things mm -hmm. we dedicate our time to. It's all about teaching kids how to learn differently. And I, because that relates to me, because I was kind of a poor student. I did okay in school, but I didn't really learn in the way that when I look back on it, that would have been beneficial to me. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit ADD, mm. AJ. I don't oh. know if you know that about me. <laughs> That's why we get along so well. I have, I have my mind, <laughs> you know, I, I, I have a creative mindset. And so my mind is constantly on fire and sitting yeah, still I how you feel. In, at a desk, getting a lecture, learning a curriculum. That's really hard for me. Same. And so you can kind of see that influence too on how I like to, to lead our brands here. Yeah. That it's, it's varied and it's, it's mostly consumer centric where you're able to kind of guide your own understanding and relationship and experience with Callaway. Mm -hmm. So that innovation and learning and teaching is teaching concepts to people is something that's really fascinating to me and, and something I study a lot. And George reminds me so much of the most innovative teachers and educators. He, he really is like your favorite high school or college professor who you walk in and you sit down and within 10 or 15 minutes, you're like, you're in holy. Yeah. yeah like I, I, I gotta, I gotta strap on my seatbelt because my mind is getting blown right now. And his, his, what he's teaches is very tried and true. You know, mm -hmm. the models that he shows of, of golf swings are Ben Hogan and, mm -hmm. you know, Tiger Woods. And like, they're, it's not, it's not some fatty, fatty, F A D D Y, mm -hmm. faddish thing. It's, it's just developing a motion that you can feel and experience in a different way. Mm -hmm. And the way he talks about it is like authentic, you know, yeah. he, he's a, so is it more personality that you, that you like connect with, or is it, is it his teaching philosophies or styles or like, what it's is both, it? you know, the personality, his personality is obviously really different than mine. He's, yeah. but he, I spent, uh, let's see, I spent nine, almost nine hours with him. Mm. Now I wasn't with him. I was watching him give left lessons and stuff just cause I was up there. I was like, oh, I want to see see this guy work. Yeah. Literally. I want to see him work in the same way that you'd like audit a class mm -hmm. in, in college or whatever. Right. And then at the end of the day, I took a lesson with him, oh. which was, <laughs> aw it was so fun. I knew, we were, I knew we were getting to that. It was so fun. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think that's the other thing too, is he just makes it really fun. He makes learning fun. Yeah. And, um, if you think about like when you've had lessons, before sometimes they don't really make le learning fun yeah. you know they make learning a chore totally and that that boy does that bring back bad memories That's a killer yeah from high school college grad school yep. but the professors and the the experts that really made it fun and you could you couldn't wait to get back and talk mm -hmm. about it um those are the ones that you remember and they're memorable of how they package things that are that are not made up it's not made up new thinking necessarily although there are definitely ways of thinking about the golf swing that i'd never heard of yeah um but just the way that he talks about it and the way that he gets that passion in his students um uh, i'm not a student but maybe yeah. um sounds i don't know kinda yeah sounds, i don't know maybe it sounds be. like you're on that road maybe i will be <laughs> just because i enjoyed the time up yeah. there and he's based in la right based up in la yeah. and he's just said a little little kind of muni mm -hmm. um hits on the mats Love and that. uh which the whole the whole atmosphere is great, and he's yeah. a wonderful guy. He just as yeah. he's as pure as it gets, and like I said, nine hours pretty much spent with him, had lunch and dinner, uh, mm. which he's so he paid for, which mm. is ridiculous. What a guy. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, hey, I'll come back tomorrow if you're gonna buy me lunch and dinner. Um, does he? Does I mean, I I assume that he makes a pretty good living for himself, though. I mean, <laughs> yeah, he, he does. He's like teaching. A ton of high profile people. A ton of high profile um, and people. He, and he, he can't get on his lesson your lesson sheet. So he's he's right. he's booked. No, that's what I mean. And he's he's like us. It seems like he's literally just he's never not working. Always you know? working. like he's always, yeah. Always doing something, working. you know. And his his uh I don't know how he gets the energy because he's he starts at nine, yeah. I guess, maybe nine, eight. So he's there at eight, yep. setting up. He starts at nine. He he finished at at uh at six. Yeah. 
and it's we had we went to lunch so we had an hour of lunch break mm -hmm. but it's constant yeah it's constant there's no downtime i never even saw him go to the bathroom <laughs> i never saw him drink water he just like boom 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 he boom, could boom, be a, he could be a robot he could be ai maybe because he, he i mean well i mean talk about passion for what he does yeah he he taught he's talks golf swing literally all day went to lunch guess what we talked about golf swing yeah went right. to dinner guess what we talked about golf swing. Right, so he's all right so you just confirmed <laughs> he, is, he is ai oh my gosh <laughs> yeah just crazy yeah is there anything uh potentially in the future of any sort of callaway tie-ins with him oh i don't know like i would love that i would love yeah. that but yeah he primarily because of what i described right at the beginning which yeah. is he delivers he delivers content that helps golfers yeah in a way that is entertaining and fun and resonant and you know there are a lot of instructors that do that yep the, pr the challenge with us is when we when we do stuff with people people think oh callaway that's the approach callaway want or callaway recommends and we're right. not really about that i know so we'll see but um you need an independence kind of yeah to, we have to, to be fairly organic. agnostic exactly but i think from a if you like, if you're picking up what he's laying down, mm -hmm. it's awesome. Yeah. If you're not, then don't worry about it. Don't go somewhere else. Maybe, yeah. you know, there are other instructors that you would like or the way to learn the golf swing that would resonate more with you. Yeah. It's just like there are other professors. You probably saw that when at Hofstra, you totally. would talk to your, your friends and, hey, what 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 classes do you like? And they'd name one who's professor of that. And you're like, oh, I couldn't stand that guy. Yeah. Really? I loved him. To they love him because of different reasons. You no know? doubt about it. I mean, I minored in philosophy. Like, that's for, for that to happen, the professor has to be really good yeah. at, like, lit all the literature courses I was taking to get me to read just book after book. That's, like more of a testament to the professor than it is Boy, that's me. a great you know example I mean? <laughs> because I bet you that you became a philosophy major because what, whoever you took philosophy 100 from, you it, love that professor. English I took lit. philosophy yeah. 101. It, Did you love your professor? Um, yes and no. He was a really good professor. He, his like biggest thing was don't be, uh, like you should always be really genuine. Uh -huh. So he was like, if you see me outside of class, don't ask me how I'm doing. Like, unless you really want to know, don't say oh. like, hi, how are you? And I then like I, that. Oh, and straight then I shooter. saw him wow. and he said, hi, Alexis, how are you? And oh. I was like, uh, oh. I'm don't ask me how I'm doing. <laughs> Brosa. I don't yeah. know. This guy kind of sounds like an actor Dr. or something Brosa? like that. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah. So my English lit professor was like literally the one who spurred me on to, to doing all of those classes. And it was literally, it was all because of him. You know there what I you mean? Go. So good oh, example. speaking of which, before I went to Germany. My dad turned 80. Oh, I saw that. So I saw that. You got, and, uh, this is uh, the return to Instagram I well, was Well, it was. I was, yeah, inspired. I, I was inspired to do so because um, one of the things that also happened on that trip is like my daughter, my 13-year-old, the only way to communicate with her is on Instagram now. Like yeah. she's just, it's bizarre. How old? 13? 13. And so I was just thinking about, oh, let me, let me kind of pay more attention to to this medium mm -hmm. now lately also the other vector for me i'm gonna get i'm gonna get deep with you guys good here. uh Lex. get deep because i had a i had a couple deep questions for you so okay, go ahead. you great. start you start <laughs> i don't want to at this point in my life because of my job and how how pulled in a million different directions yeah. i am and and with the people that that i love and the work that i love i don't want to mistake communication with connection and within social media i think it's been pretty unhealthy in a lot of ways because those of us that tend to be a little more introverted and have have pretty um demanding kind of time schedules we miss or we mistake communication with connection mm -hmm. and so i haven't really been on instagram as a platform really and lately I've, I'm not even on Twitter that much. I read it, but I don't, I don't really engage with it much because I'm opting as a, you know, middle-aged person to try to go towards Lex's, uh, philosophy teacher's approach, which is I'm looking for more of an authentic connection. Yeah. So you're, you're saying when you say communication versus connection, you mean essentially peep or just, we'll use Instagram for this example, but people on Instagram almost, uh, talking to you as opposed to really engaging you and 
talking with you or something no doubt. like that. Or just put, let me put it more simply. Am I a better human being because of what I just posted? Yeah. And the response that I got. And what am I what is the response I'm trying to elicit? Am I trying to kick up some false emotion or false connection that's almost like a euphoria, a drug euphoria that's not real? Mm -hmm. That's not really filling up my emotional chalice, mm -hmm. as uh, Jane Fonda would say. <laughs> or am I going to want? Am I more willing to seek out like an authentic connection with with another human being? Yeah. And so, social media to me is not that. It's the former. It's 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 superficial communication. Yeah. That's fine. It has its place. But coming out of coming out of my dad's birthday, I was really moved in a way that. I didn't know how to share what I was feeling. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I had at my disposal was, was, you know, social media. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like, you know what, I'm going to try, I'm just going to try something different. I'm not going to, I don't want to, I don't want to post like vapid crap mm -hmm. on, on Instagram. Um, which is why if you look at my Instagram account, which isn't private, it should, maybe it should be, <laughs> it's not a bunch of garbage, mm -hmm. but because of that, I also have a much I have a filter, so which is a, is also not that great for content creation, as right. you know. Right, right. So you know, I I post like stuff that I think is important to me. Yeah. And coming out of the weekend, last weekend, two weeks ago, it was there's something some things that happened that were really important to me that mm -hmm. I think happened to a lot of people my age, which is as your parents start to get older and they face their own mortality, but also more you know, which is profound, and then mm. equally as profound as as as, as uh, as children, we see our we see our parents' mortality. Mm -hmm. That's powerful shit. Yeah, big time. Um, you know, I just was so moved by that that I felt like I wanted to share. And one of the things that came out of that, I'm I'll be 49 years old in in August, AJ. Mm -hmm. Up until last weekend, I did not know the story of why my name is Harry. Oh, now I thought I did. I thought I did. Now that's yeah. a dumb example, but like, can you imagine like if you didn't know, like, oh, I thought I was named AJ because yeah. I was, you know, uh, Anthony John or whatever your yeah. name is. I Joseph. think that is your name, Anthony, Anthony Joseph. Joseph. Yep. And then, both yeah, but why are you named Anthony? Oh, because you're both, both my grandparents. Because you're the second Italian kid, and every second Italian <laughs> kid is named Anthony. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you know, right, so you know it's your grandparents. One hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But do you know why your grandparents are named that? No. Okay, so that's you know yeah. discover right. Yeah. Yeah. So. For me, I'm named Harry, and I had always heard the story, which is a true story. My dad wanted to name me Harry. Mm -hmm. My mom wanted said, "No, Harry's a nickname, so we got to pick a name that it's it's uh, derived from." Yeah. And they said they, uh, my dad said, "Well, I'll pick Harry. You pick the name." And so she picked Harrison. So that's my name, Harrison. Mm -hmm. That's that part's true, but the part I never even asked was, "Why did you like the name Harry?" Yeah. Forty, almost forty nine years. I never asked that question. Can so what was that? Well, what was the reason? You can't tell you it's too you're... personal. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's getting back to the professor. Harry Rutledge was the name of the professor my dad had at the University of Georgia that my dad mm. said changed his life, his classics professor. So up until that point, my dad, as a lot of people did coming out of um, the Southeast, he originally started at Georgia Tech. He played baseball there. He transferred from Georgia Tech to Penn for a year he started out as a, a business management major at georgia tech which every athlete does mm. he, yeah. even back right. in 1957 <laughs> or whatever. right they started the trend yeah <laughs> and then he hated it um and then he sort of burned out on baseball so he, he went to penn and studied business mm -hmm. guess what hated it yeah and he went to the university of georgia transferred back to the university of georgia and went into the humanities was thinking humanities which nobody really did back then yeah because how are you gonna get a job if you think it's hard to get a job now in the humanities <laughs> how hard was it then in 1958 you know <laughs> yeah so, um georgia so and that was his classics professor and he said it totally changed his trajectory of his life therefore his third son by then they had run out of names yeah so let's go classics professor i didn't even know that until a week that's ago crazy. that's Isn't not that wild and your dad was a i remember reading a, a long story uh, feature about your dad. He's yeah. a pretty accomplished guy. Yeah, he's in the arts. Everybody, everybody right. knows who my dad is. Right, and he like he inquired a lot of artists. Yeah, that a lot of people like weren't. Yeah, like so his his whole you know speaking of vectors, his his uh, DNA was to 
was to be a voice and to to herald and introduce the work of artists that were uh, marginalized. Right. Exactly. And so with the, and that that was really the trajectory of his career from when he transitioned into the arts from this, you know, inflection point that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Um starting with in you know dad's in in atlanta introducing to the atlanta community the work of asian and african antiquities now this is in the 60s so that was so you can imagine the backdrop of what's going on in atlanta georgia <laughs> in, atlanta? in the 60s yeah no <laughs> so pretty radical stuff big time very you know that and and then that that ended up transitioning in the eighties when he sort of moved out of that and got disillusioned for that. It's another podcast altogether. Yeah. Um, but, uh, which gets into race and politics and yeah. all kind of stuff. Yep. He transitioned into Southern African American artists to have them be viewed and, uh, looked at in the same way that you would look at, um, well-known trained American artists, American or, or European. Right. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's taken a while. It's not like trying to convince the world that, you know, the new Epic flash yeah, drivers, the best driver in the world. <laughs> yeah. that's uh, we got launch monitors for that. Oh, stuff. where did that so you're dealing come with? From? You're still dealing with race and politics and, yeah. um, things that are subjective and how, who controls the way the narrative, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. little Hamilton who controls yeah. the narrative yep. and, um, so like we talked about a lot of that stuff, you know, over the over the weekend and my dad's my dad's unfortunately health is very poor and his mm. mind is is not as sharp as it should be. And yeah, so we had just it was it was just fascinating. Like you just have like these little moments of 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 clarity and where the the conversation when there's this backdrop of mortality looming yeah. over you. We were going to get heavy on the ship show today. Good. When there's this backdrop of mortality living, you know, over your interaction with another human being, you, you don't got time for superficiality, right? You don't got time for the BS. You want to get right to the heart of stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I was just moved by that. Yeah. Well, that I was, that was, I was moved by that. Yeah. Well, I would say Harry that even, the business that we're in and in terms of marketing, I think, I think your dad would say, I don't want to speak for him, but like a lot of maybe his philosophies or philosophies that he shared with you or passed down to you. I think a lot of them resonate in marketing in terms of one of our goals is to show how everybody enjoys the game, no mm -hmm. matter where your background uh, no matter if you have a one hole uh, loop that you literally play in, you know, outside of a city, whatever it is, if you have a ball and a stick, like we're trying to bring those stories to the forefront. And I think those, those are kind of, there's, there's definitely a similarity there or that you're bringing to our team that maybe yeah. we're, we're kind of, you know, passed down from, well, you know, I, from I totally, I totally agree with that. And we're, we're all, you know, we're all just manifestations of our life experience. And right. the, my dad, I'll tell you what, my dad doesn't care about golf at all. Um, no matter of fact, he hates golf. <laughs> so, but he would love pivot that that would be. Yeah. There you go. Love it. Awesome. That's a uh, amazing, amazing stuff, Harry. Um, so that, that was my return to Instagram. It's funny how it. people are about around here hashtag sent me a text he's like wow you're on instagram again I know. like i didn't even know that it. was a thing yeah. like okay thank you for noticing well listen if you if you really want to dive deep and officially get back to instagram i'll be looking out for doug and jay oh yeah i gotta text. get some content on there <laughs> gotta get some doug and jay content all right cool uh we're gonna take a couple questions we always like to take questions yes. for you um i have them right here so I have some listener messages. Thank you, everybody, to that sent them in. Remember, you can call us, 760-804-4653, or email them, shipshow at callawaygolf.com. First one from good friend. I'm sitting up in my chair. Yep. First first question, Chuck H. You know Chuck. <laughs> oh, do I know Chuck? You know of Chuck. Of course. We like to answer all of Chuck's questions. Yes. What is the process of recruiting up-and-coming men and women from college and junior ranks? 
Are there scouts like an MLB team? Curious if you could briefly explain what that process is like. Yeah, a little different than that. Yeah. Um, but we do have a team that that is starts looking at player. Now, this is how crazy it is. They have a list of, of juniors starting when they're in about eighth grade, mm-hmm. ninth grade. Now, that's a that's a list that's well known. If you ask the other golf companies who are the best ninth graders in America, we all know who they are. Mm-hmm. Isn't that wild? It's crazy. So we start tracking those players starting then and even sometimes before and building relationships with uh, with their coaches, with the players, with the parents and trying you know again it's about we want those kids to be to be to reach their full potential as golfers with us and it starts early and there's definitely a team that is there looking at working with helping kids and then when they get to college it's a little different because they are part of a college program and then we have a different way of working with them and some of that has to do with the NCAA requirements that you always have to go to the coach or the university and that's fine and so we do it that way and then um really it's a it's a mix by the time you get to college Mm -hmm. when somebody would be on the radar you know that that funnel of who's going to end up playing on the PGA Tour becomes a lot narrower and every year you know the numbers are what they are that only a very very few number of people graduated from college ultimately have P- PGA tour careers. A lot of them turn pro and a lot of them end up playing a lot of the tours, you know, many tours or, yeah. or developmental tours, but a very, very few of them have a career. Um, Cause it's a, it is a hard road brother. Yeah. I was, we had Shintaro Ban on the last podcast. Uh, speaking of which, uh, how cool is that guy? Well, we have to get his. We have to get him his own podcast. Yeah, that's uh, he's amazing. I already. I've, I've he's been, amazing. I've he's been really good with friends him. with our, our buddy uh, Joe Quack, if you know Joe yeah, up in the yep, Bay Area. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So he, yeah. So when he was on the show, when he was done, I was like, all right, dude, um, let's schedule some time to talk about your college golf podcast because, like, the insight he brings from college golf, he he talks about it from recruiting, like things that he thinks like need to change, like big time. Uh, but he just like he knows everybody. Uh, pretty much in the field, but like a guy like him, he went to number three in the world amateur golf rankings. Yeah. Uh, he has he has status on the McKenzie Tour, PJ Tour Canada, but you look at a guy like him who could just flat out ball out. Mm-hmm. And right, he's in Canada right now, Tough and so many Tough number sledding. three amateur in the world. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like won five times in yeah. his senior year of college or whatever it was. Like. And, it's tough. and he's in Canada. Like, and it's you know a global I mean? sport too. So not only in North America, but now you're, you know, the kids from all over the world yeah. that are coming up. And yeah. that's one of the cool part about the games. I mean, the talent level in the game right yeah. now. And, you know, when you look, you look historically and there've been great players in every era, the talent that's coming up now is just like it is in every other sport. It's unparalleled. Yeah. If you look at, just look at every sport, NBA, you may not like the game necessarily as much. Mm-hmm. If you're watched the 30 for 30 Lakers Celtics, you may like you may prefer the way the game was played then, but the talent of the players now mm-hmm. far 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 surpasses the talent that oh, yeah. existed, you know, 30 years ago in in that league. And and same with same with baseball, um same with football and definitely same with golf. Yeah. Um same with, you know, global soccer. If you watch watch Go back and watch the old first division, you know, before the EPL started, or even watch the EPL from 1995. Yeah, right. You know, 90s, it, early 90s, which was you may you may like the way the game was played then. It was much more physical, and yeah, you know, the pitches were small and smaller, and the stadiums were smaller. But you can't deny the players are better now, mm-hmm. and that's the same for golf and and even college golf, which is on now on the golf channel. If you watch yeah. the ladies, the women, <laughs> and now the, the men's, I mean, it doesn't look that different than what you would see on a right. tour on tour. And what's crazy is yesterday at like five 30 or five 45 in the afternoon, we had a crowd around the TV in marketing. There was literally 20 people watching Duke, the fu- watching, we were, Duke. <laughs> we were watching the Duke wake women's NCAA final. And it was, Literally next to the Masters, it was by far the most compelling golf that we watched all year, and it was the NCAA championship. Yeah, it was cool, right? It was unbelievable. Uh, real, real, real quick, just to uh, wrap this question up, I watched Real Sports 
on HBO on Tuesday, and they had a thing about Norway and how Norway is training all the new athletes, like all the junior, the kids, like and how they, they do it completely different than ev- every other country. And that's why they're winning so many more Olympic medals now. So if you go back to yeah. this past Olympics, like Norway won the medal count and nobody realized it, but they have a completely different way, this far out way of training kids uh, as individual athletes and team athletes. Like they have... It's a completely different mindset than what that. than what we have. I missed it. Everybody has to go check it out. It's like it's reigning, fascinating. Reigning U.S. men's amateur golf champion Victor Hovland from Norway. Norway. There you go. So there you have it. All right, let's take one more question and then we'll uh, we'll scram out of here. Uh, that one's a little too easy. Um, <laughs> oh, you're trying to give me the hard questions. <laughs> oh, this is a, this is a kind of a fun one. I don't know. I like this topic so. Um, it's a it's kind of a played out topic, but it's always worth to talk about. Nicholas, Nicholas V. Can can we ask Harry if there will be any focus or initi- or initiative driven by Callaway to improve pace of play across all levels of golf? Ideally, start with the pros who are dreadful when it comes to pace of play. I don't know. That's funny. I, well, just, I, have, I always like these argue. Well, I we do like have the pace of play uh, initiatives <laughs> here within Callaway Marketing, and that is we ridicule anyone. <laughs> Who may be perceived as a, as a slow player? That is the best form. It is really uh, the best form. Awareness, so I, right? Awareness. Aware, absolutely. And I I fully endorse. I don't know if this this is a Harry a Harry opinion, not a not a Callaway opinion. I fully endorse PGA pros calling out people on their tour that are slow play. It's no, the only way it's going to change. It's the only way. It's the only way it's going to change. They don't have to bully them. They don't have to cyber bully them. But just say, hey, here's here are the slow players. Yep. Posting. I think. Uh, uh, Eduardo Molinari already did that a couple weeks ago when he posted. Here are the here are the slow times. Yeah, and then I think I think the broadcast crews should start talking about it more. Mm. And all it really will take is for the tour to say that it's a problem and start finding guys, and guys will speed up in a hurry. When you start to take money out of their pocketbook, oh yeah, you speed you up. Yeah, and the way I sped up was my friends were like, "Yo, you got to play faster, dude." <laughs> yeah. I'm like really i'm like really and they're like yeah like you gotta you have to play much faster yeah they're like whatever you're doing you have to cut that in half and that's literally how i my my pace of play completely changed so that's an interesting point i i don't know if we'll be able to do anything pace of play um on tour but what we could do because we do all this content that people allegedly like we could definitely start to make it more things that we talk about in social of just here here are five easy things if you think you're a fast player you're probably not yeah if you think you're a slow player you definitely are (laughs) here are five to ten things you can do that are really easy to just practice putting into your game that'll speed your play up Mm -hmm. because i always say this the same same advice i got from the guy that kind of brought me into the game if you're a good golfer people will not want to play with you even if you're good if you're slow Mm -hmm. if you're a crappy golfer people will be fine to play with you if they're good if you're fast 100 but if you're if you're good and slow no bueno (laughs) if you're bad and slow even worse (laughs) but if you're good and fast those are the best ones to play with if you're bad and fast those are the those people are fine to play with i love playing with bad and fast players fine yeah you're like who cares yeah we i mean we even when we were at Chichesi, we were getting around in like almost less than three hours yeah, before some. That's the right time. That's the way to do and it. And I think that's and carrying I think that bags. takes the pressure off of you too. If you're learning the game, is like no one will care if you're if you play if you're if you're bad. That's the time when you should be. I'm going to be the fastest golfer on this golf course. Right. I'm bad, but I'm going to be bad fast. <laughs> be listen. If you're going to miss, miss quick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I remember like before, even before our round, Harry. We're like whenever we play, we're always like, all right, well. Uh, there's there's not really anybody in front of us. Let's literally try to play, like let's try to blow the group behind us. Yeah. Let's let's try to create like a five hole That's leeway, the way I like to play. and then it's just like, <laughs> and the then when like you when play. you have that mindset, it's the it's the the most fun you it's can have on a golf fun. course. You're not waiting around. No, because you're, you're just like going. It's and by great. the way, your score <laughs> is not worse and usually better. It's crazy. It's usually better, and you're yeah. at, you get out of your head. You're not yeah. like in your head the whole time. You're you're moving, and you make it. We're walking, you know, I yeah. walk 99% of my rounds, but yeah. we're walking, you make it more of an athletic uh, activity and yeah. not just not just such a 
grind. No, I know. I like pulling out my club while it's on my bag, putting my bag Same. down, having the club already in one hand, and then just going up and then just saying. I always say that too <laughs> when I'm on the on you not with you guys because you guys know how I play, but I always will say that with people like, "Hey, we're gonna play ready golf today, right?" Mm -hmm. Meaning, I'm not gonna wait no. until it's my turn <laughs> while you mess around with whether you should be an eight or a seven and you're a, you know eight iron or seven iron and you're a you're a 19 handicap right like it's not gonna matter dude i know hit the ball and let's move you know Ready? yeah i might i might actually just write this right when we get back to my desk right now <laughs> lots of while it's like really fresh on yeah on my head um all right harry thank you any any uh Thanks for having me. i mean you've you've said it all as you've as, said how, it all. As, how, as howard uh, normally said any any last words before we get to this clip of the new Real golf talk with Johnny Miller. Uh, no, but that's a great segue because um, I think the lesson from what I was saying here is try new stuff, engage mm -hmm. with people differently, and listen. Yeah, how's that? And don't be superficial, don't like be superficial. like our like our guy Johnny Miller. It's a perfect segue. <laughs> exactly. You're right. All right, let's take a look, a listen at this clip from the new Real Golf Talk with Johnny Miller, hosted by Chris Harrison. So let's talk about Kepka's final day because he shoots four over yeah and and as you said he bogeys 11 12 13 14 what does johnny miller say in the booth I, I know you weren't there i know you didn't see or feel the conditions which is a big part of it but what does johnny miller say after he comes off that fourth straight bogey uh you're right i wouldn't probably say too much after two bogeys but the third bogey i know i know something's haywire right something's haywire and then with the fourth one i would probably would have said you know that uh gasket is leaking oil right now it's coming out pretty good <laughs> but you know he still has a decent lead but dustin is doing what uh to make it interesting so it actually was great for the championship to have all of a sudden now you got a ball game yeah. all right guys that was the new podcast new barth i know that's right you're not harry anymore you're new barth i'm not and and look at us we've changed location we've changed location we've changed clothes we're, well, we're i'm in the same clothes we're pretty flexible here we are pivot show. we like to pivot we like to pivot absolutely so that podcast you were there when johnny and chris recorded mm -hmm. in pebble beach what was yeah. that like kind of uh watching for the first time two people that never haven't had many conversations together yeah but they they're both, right into but, it but they're both pros Right. Unlike this, this is amateur hour, but <laughs> right. um, what's amazing about it We're is, like 15 is, handicaps at this. You know, that's a nice compliment for us. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people, I'm sure, Chuck Hoffman will disagree. Um, what was so amazing, AJ, was you know we had a format, we had a rundown, we knew what we wanted to cover. Yeah. And let's just be honest here, Johnny didn't know what a podcast was two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So for him to kind of like come in and see this equipment and and headsets and stuff. The headset. Brought Did you back. use this? Yeah, very we brought this exact same. So equipment. this was this was Johnny Miller's headset. No, the one I'm wearing is oh, what you Johnny wore. You're wearing Chris. I Harrison's got Harrison. Headset. Yeah, right, I'll take that. <laughs> but um, you know, these guys, uh, it, it's as if they'd been talking golf for years and years. Yeah. And I, I think you can't underestimate when two professionals put headsets on what they can accomplish. But yeah. they had this rundown, and and what was so cool to me is through all the years of doing golf on NBC, mm -hmm. and I was lucky enough to be out uh, kind of from the late. 90s through about 2003, 2004 mm -hmm. with the NBC crew, and then again in uh, 12 and 13 for certain events. Johnny always overprepared. Johnny always went to the golf course. He always went to the range. He always talked to guys, and he always had these massive amounts of notes and information. And sure enough, he walks into the podcast. He's 15 minutes early to the room, puts his piece of paper down. His format has a whole folder now labeled podcast. Had all these articles clipped out, hmm. all these things highlighted, stats ready to go. And he literally took the rundown, and it looked like he he had written kind of like you know uh, Russell Crowe in A Beautiful Mind. Do, do you think he everywhere. hired an assistant? No. Or do you think he did that himself? No, this is what he does. Yeah. This is why he was the best broadcaster that's ever been in the 18th Tower of of golf. Yeah, is because he was that over prepared for every situation. So when Chris starts asking him about Brooks Kepka or John Daly or Tiger Woods or Phil, he had stats for all that stuff, and he yeah. knew what he wanted to say. Yeah, I like that. It started out as takes from Johnny, but then it transitioned into essentially like an interview yeah, conversation. Of, of how Johnny started playing golf, uh, how the transition from golfer to analyst, like you were just saying. Yeah. Uh, it, it was it was really smooth the way Chris was like able to handle and steer the entire yeah, conversation. I, I mean, I think this Chris you know? Harrison guy. If you're if you're maybe ABC and you're listening to the Ship Show, you should yeah. hire Chris Harrison. Yeah, he's seriously. really good. He could do. Yeah, he was shows. like very good. Like yeah. I, I mean, obviously he's a pro, mm -hmm. but 
like he was just so smooth with like his what he was uh, when he dropped like the sixty three yeah. in seventy three. Yeah. That was that was pretty funny uh, very early on. But he was just like we know he knows golf. He knows he knows yeah. golf, and he just but he portrayed that very yeah, well. And I don't know if all our listeners know amazing. how much of a golf fan he yeah. is, how much of a golf aficionado he is, and a historical uh, lover of the game. Yeah. So that's why Chris wanted to do this. So a couple stories uh, that kind of came out of it that kind of surprised me were one, Johnny told the story, I think really for the first time, of how when NBC called him to hire him after Lee Trevino announced yeah. he was going to the, the 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 senior tour back then, he basically didn't want to do it. And then after his first show, he quit. Yeah, he that's what I'm not doing it. it. Yeah, and that then, was nuts. So it was funny. Like he joked with us, "Well, guys, I'll do one podcast, and I'll probably want to quit this too." <laughs> but he he definitely he seemed to really like it. And by yeah. the time we walk out, he's like, "What are we doing the next one? Yeah. When are we doing? Well, this when again? are you doing the next? So, one? When so, is it? so the whole kind of point of this is to get Johnny's takes on the major events yeah. of golf. So we're going to do six of them this year, eight of them in future years. Okay. So the next one will be either the Sunday night or the Monday. After the U.S. Open, beautiful. And Johnny lives at Pebble Beach. He lives just yeah. up the street from it. So it'll be way, able how to about be, an address? I mean, right? You know, we're big fans of Bill Simmons, yeah. And we love the Rapid Reaction podcast. Yeah. So this would be this would be cool to have Johnny there, ready to go yeah. right after. You know, I mean, yeah, and Chris an will, hour after the last punch and, and Chris will be in Mexico recording uh, Paradise. So oh, so him. Chris is going to have to work really this, hard. I wonder if I wonder if Chris needs. This well, here's assistant. the thing, H.A. Someone Johnny. someone needs to fly down to Mexico <laughs> and record Chris's audio. Yeah, you won't well, be able I, to go, uh, and Lex just volunteered. That's true. So that Lex, might be, you're going to Mexico. That might be close. My uh. A good buddy of mine, Greg Midland. Shout out Greg Midland of USGA. Used to be my boss back at mm -hmm. the MGA. I've met him with. Uh, he was like, you, "Oh yeah, yeah, that's right." Yeah. Uh, he was asking me if I was going up to Pebble for the U.S. Open. Yeah. I was like, "Oh man, that's like really close to like being have able you, to do had, anything other yet? than like no, no kid as of yet. No, no kid. No, right now we are it's, kidless. It's, well, actually, I don't know. We're recording this on Wednesday, right? So by the time this airs, this by the time could, this airs, I might not be in you, the office. That's going to be crazy if Harry's yeah. doing the pod by himself tomorrow. I know he, he might like. That. I'm I've, I'm staying by Harry my prediction. <laughs> yeah, of course. And Daniel's hand. I, I will keep my prediction. You're going to have the child on Sunday, on the 26th of May. Wow, that's where the action is. Mm -hmm. Do you have any action with anybody on that? No, no one will take it. Oh, nobody. Will everyone thinks it. I have. I'll like, take it. Everyone thinks I have. <laughs> can I take? Can uh, I take that? Or it'd what? be really awful if you bet on the day <laughs> your own kid is coming. Jess, come on, we got to go to the hospital. Yeah, just we like, got to go induce, right now. Yeah. <laughs> we got a lot of cash right. riding on this. Dilated. Um, so, so the other things uh, that I learned about doing this pod were uh, specifically about some of the the ways that Johnny kind of interacts with different of professional golfers. Mm -hmm. So he said only about a dozen times, but I can count a lot more, where he said yeah. he crossed his line. And he said the rule is within 24 hours, he had to apologize mm -hmm. to that person in person. Yeah. So like when he said the Justin Leonard thing at the Ryder Cup, that yep. Justin Leonard should be home that. on the couch. Um, it's just such a fascinating listen. So make sure wherever uh, the podcast is called Real Golf Talk with Johnny Miller, hosted by Chris Harrison, yep. part of the Callaway Podcast Network. We got a network now. We have That's a network, and it's actually the first podcast that has its own feed. So yeah. we're actually getting questions on Twitter yeah. about where – they're like, hey, I can't find the podcast. I can't find it either. It's still it's still being reviewed by iTunes. They have yeah. a process that yeah. usually takes 24 to 48 hours. Yep. Uh, but Spotify has it. SoundCloud has it. Yeah, it'll um, be on iTunes yeah. soon. It'll, it'll be, be on, Yeah. Soon. But hopefully by the time you're listening to this, you could just literally press back on your yeah. on your iPhone or uh, Android. I mean, so... I've never used an Android device. See, neither have I. I was just going to ask you. Yeah. What about the Android people out there? Because well, there's a lot of on, them. They get it Samsung, on SoundCloud and, and Spotify. Yeah, but and there's Google, iTunes they can for, get off there's of Google, iTunes. though, right? Yeah, there's iTunes for, for yeah. Android. All right. So they can get See, I don't know. The, I, gotta, the I should is, do research is, on is this. We don't ask for much on this podcast, but yeah. can you guys subscribe to that podcast? Oh, yeah. Like it? Can you write a review? We won't spam it, that's for sure, we because won't there's spam only going to be a couple but, episodes but a year. Please, please help us uh, kind of get the word out and tell some of your friends. Yeah. Uh, i got to make sure I put a post in the THP forum today. Yeah. Lex is going to put one in the community about it. Yep. Community's back up and running, by the way. Community's back up and running after... About a five-day hiatus. Some yeah, people start that, to lose composure a little bit, but everything is okay now. Did that hiatus right, have anything to good. do with Browning going on a boondoggle to Hawaii? Uh, well, it just so happened to maybe coincide with those dates. Do so, you think I Browning just didn't want to work during those dates, so he like pulled the plug <laughs> he on it? Unplugged it. <laughs> he changed like the password. Yeah, yeah, just like literally unplugged every single thing. Yeah, I could see that out of happening. The yeah. I could see that happening. So yeah, yeah. good stuff. Well, right. make sure you guys go listen to it. Um, Next episode, five weeks from now, four weeks from now, something for me? like that. No, oh, for Johnny, of, of Johnny it'll pod. be the, the the it'll come out the Monday after the U.S. Yeah. Open. I like calling it the Johnny Pod, by the way. 
The Johnny Pod? The Johnny Pod. That's, That's also a great name for it. Yeah, Johnny Pod. All right. Well, we'll look forward to uh, hearing more of those and looking forward to... I'm going to be out of town the next couple weeks. Okay. You're going to be a dad the next couple weeks. Yeah. I don't know who's going to be running the show. Yeah. show. Lex will probably, probably have a hand of it. Dan will probably have a hand of it. Chad Jones. Yeah. Uh, Yo, D. Nevs, maybe? Yeah, Yo, D. Nevs, Yo, D. Nevs on there. We can get Browning on there to talk about the Hawaii Boondoggle. Let us know. Let us know who you guys want to... Yeah. Let us know you want any chance Alex to come in and do one? Any chance to come in and do one? He'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, send us your suggestions. That'd be great. All right. Want to wrap this thing up? Yeah. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Subscribe, review. We'll see you next week. It's amazing. We have officially survived another pirate ship show. Thanks for listening. For more, go visit CallawayGolf.com.